What? Well, you all think every Punjabi boy dreams of Canada. <laughs> Let me clear this up. Do you know that three times as many Punjabis go to Turkey as to Canada? Yet if I walked in here with a Turkish flag, no one would bat an eye. In fact, Turkey has a higher quality of life than Canada. Did you know that 70% of students going to Canada aren't even chasing a better life? Then, then what are they doing? According to a survey, they are trying to escape strict moms. Yes. Raise your hand if you have a strict mom. Put them all together. That's my mom. <laughs> Fellow speakers and guests. I shared these arguments with my cousins, even though I totally made them up, totally false. And, and guess what? Four of them, believe me, two, uh, two still went to Canada. That's fine. Fellow speakers and guests, ladies and gentlemen, words. Words wield a remarkable power capable of sculpting beliefs and reshaping destinies. They can lift you up from the depths of despair to the heights of success. Or, or shatter your happiness with a single phrase. From Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream to Winston Churchill's We Shall Fight on the Beaches and even to Adolf Hitler's rhetoric, words have the power to unite or divide us. Just consider this. Words possess the potential to not only touch hearts but to transform entire lives. We've all been there. I, I remember myself in grade four, a young boy, and my teacher, a phenomenal one. She complained that despite knowing the answers, I didn't participate in class. My voice was like a locked vault of knowledge. One evening, my dad approached me. And let me tell you, my dad is a cool dad. Raise your hand if you have a cool dad. Put them all together, that's my dad. So, interestingly enough, he said, Son, you're shy. You're a little reserved. That's fine. You get that from your mother's side. <laughs> but don't ever act like this again. Never. The after effects? Nothing changed. The same old me. A month passed. My dad, seated on the sofa, a determined glint in his eyes. Rishan, come here, he said. And then he grabbed a pen and a paper and with a flourish, drew a cycle, which goes something like this. Hard times create strong men. Hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times, easy times. These good times, in return, create weak men. And these weak men again take you back to the stage of hard times. This, this was special. He looked at me, I looked at him, and then he said the most amazing thing. Son, today you are here at this stage, good times, easy times. What's the next stage you see? Weak man. Do you want to become weak? negatively nodded and said, no dad, then, then he said, become a warrior, son, and if you become one, you'll be able to break the cycle and reach the stage of strong men directly. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, this word, warrior, stuck here, stuck in my mind so hard that from not being able to participate in a simple, small class, I went on to become an orator, a dreamer, and today in front of you, a TEDx speaker. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from that moment onwards, the ripple effect of my father's words continues to shape my path. Recently, I came across an article which described the problem of electronic waste. It goes something like this. 
In the contemporary technosphere, a burgeoning deluge of end-of-life electronic apart is rife with both tantalizing rare earth and it continues. Ever wondered why the problem of electronic waste doesn't get the attention it deserves, given its potentially dire consequences for us all? Because when you try to learn more about this critical issue, the information available is often like this. It never reaches its destination. Think about it. A simple choice word can make a difference between someone accepting or denying your message. Let's also dive back into the great epic Mahabharat, where after the war, Draupadi confronts Lord Krishna, demanding a justification for the immense loss of lives, resources, and infrastructure. Lord Krishna replied, if you had the foresightedness of choosing the right words, you could have avoided such suffering. If you had not insulted Karn at his swamvar, or had you not mocked Duryodhan by calling him as blind as his father, your dignity and respect would have been maintained. <sighs> great, great. The ripple effect of words can affect everyone around you. So weigh your words before speaking. Now, can you all recall Kapil Dev's words right before the start of the 1983 World Cup? He said, we here to win, what else we here for? A positive message immediately echoed through the universe, securing a victory for Team India. I must also take this moment to quote the Iron Lady of Pakistan, Muniba Mazari, whose words hold immense power and have inspired thousands of people. It goes something like this. Words can make you, break you, they can heal your soul, they can damage you forever. But always try to use positive words in life. They call it adversity, I call it opportunity, they call it weakness, I call it strength. They see disability, I see ability. Right words, ladies and gentlemen, can transform your soul. What kind of ripple effect do you create? Are your words producing life or death? The world would be a much, much better place if we stopped throwing stones of hatred and instead spread peace, patience, joy, kindness, and self-control. Just, just take a look at this pebble here. This pebble here, I throw it in a pond, the ripples it creates spread far and wide, just like our words. The impact of our words, like these ripples, can reach places we may never see. So the next time you speak, ladies and gentlemen, the next time you speak, think of this pebble and the ripples it may create. Raise your hand if you would create positive ripples through your words. Put them all together, the world has a brighter future. Thank you.